properties of logarithms. Let's go ahead and review logs. Log base two of four is, you got it, two. What's log base two of eight? Fill the rest out. Check your answers. Now let's review why. Alrighty, so remember when we have log base two of four equals two, that meant two squared equals four. Same idea, two cubed equals eight, and so on. Now we're asked to show that the following equations are true, that they're correct. So let's try. In this first one, I see log base two of eight times four. So I'll go ahead and multiply what's in the parentheses, get 32. Now on the other side, we have log base two of eight. Well, we know that's three and log base two of four. We know that's two. Now let's go to our next line. Log base two of 32. Well, we said that was five and three plus two is five. Hmm, pretty cool. Let's look at our next one. Log base two of 32 divided by four. Well, that's an eight. And then log base two of 32 is five minus log base two of four is two. Log base two of eight is three, five minus two is three. Check, another one that is true, we've shown it true. Log base two of four cubed. Okay, so that means we'll go ahead and do the four cubed first, get 64, but then on the other side, it's three times log base two of four. Okay, so then log base two of 64, well, we have that answer above, and that's six, and three times two is six. So we verified all three equations. Now let's look a little bit deeper about why this might be happening. Let's take a look at this exponentially. So eight is two cubed, four is two squared, and we know the exponent property is, if the bases are the same, we're allowed to add exponents when we're multiplying those two values. So equals two raised to the three plus two. Let's evaluate from there and show that those are equivalent statements. Well, this would be eight times four, and then over here we have two raised to the fifth. Well, that's 32, and that's 32. Same idea on the next one. We have two to the fifth, that's 32, divided by two squared. Well, of course, we know from our exponent properties that that's simply two raised to the five minus two. Let's go ahead and evaluate both sides. Well, that means we have 32 divided by four, on the right hand side, two cubed, and we know 32 divided by four is eight and two cubed is eight. Let's go exponential on that last example. So we have four cubed. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that as two squared raised to the third power, which then we know exponential rules close by multiply. So it will be two to the two times three, okay? Then we have four cubed on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, two to the sixth power. Four cubed is 64. Two to the sixth is 64. So you'll notice that the logarithmic properties come from the exponent properties. It's the same idea. If I have two logs that have the same base and they're being added, then I know that all that means is that we're adding two exponents. So originally it came from multiplication. Two logs, same base, being subtracted. What did that originally come from? That division. And then of course we know close by multiply. So logarithmic properties really are based off of those exponential properties. Not a whole nother thing to learn. Let's go ahead and compare the exponential rule to the logarithmic rule. In the first one, our product rule, we see that we have two values being multiplied. Now they have the same base and then they're being raised to different exponents or maybe the same exponent. And we learn that all we have to do is take that base and add the exponents and we have an equivalent statement. So logarithmically, we start with a log plus a log. Remember that the log gives us the exponent in an exponential. So when I see two logs being added, I'm thinking, hey, those are two exponents being added. What did it start out as originally? Well, two values being multiplied. So I don't have to learn a brand new rule. I just remember the exponent rule. So how about quotient property? We see a log minus a log, which remember is the exponent in an exponential. Therefore, it started out as the two values being divided. Our power property, we know that we always said close by multiply. 
Logarithmically, I see this log base b of m raised to the n, and what have they done? They brought the n down in front with multiplication. Why does this work? Well, it becomes that exponent n times log base b of m, which is an exponent. So we have an exponent times an exponent. Close by, multiply. So in the first one, we see log base c of 15 plus log base c of 12. Verify that the base is the same. And if it is, let's see, adding two exponents, well, that's originally multiplying. So my final answer on this one, I condense to log base c of 15 times 12. We've used the logarithmic product property to condense a logarithmic statement. Now let's use it to expand a logarithmic statement. So I have log base five of nine times x. I know that I can separate that into adding the two exponents. Your turn, on that next one, there's three things being multiplied. We can apply the logarithmic properties repeatedly. How did you do? Did you catch that last one where we can actually get a final answer? I really love this one because it demonstrates the need for our properties. With log base six of nine, I can't get an answer, but once I condense it into a single logarithm, I'm able to just say that equals two. Let's practice the quotient property. I have a single logarithm where the argument is a division problem. Well, remember with division, what do I do with exponents? Subtract. So I'm gonna separate that into two logs with subtraction. The numerator has to be the first and the denominator the second. Remember, subtraction is not commutative. And now to condense, rewrite this with a single log. So log base c of 30 minus log base c of 10 becomes log base c of, that's right, divide the two arguments, 30 divided by 10, which of course reduces to three. Check your answers, then let's look at power property. Now we see it in its condensed form and it's two times log base C of five. So you really have to get your brain to think about this and say, wait a second, it's two times the answer to a logarithm. So it's two times another exponent. Oh, okay. So that two is actually an exponent that can be brought back up to the five. So log base C of five squared or log base C of 25. Next, we apply that power property in reverse. We have log base five of x cubed. Well, it might be easier to demonstrate the answer if we bring the three in front and just show that close by multiply in logarithmic form. Those last two examples really show the power of the power property took something that maybe I would have had to grab a calculator for and turned it into something I could totally do in my head. Let's pull this all together. Why don't you try the first three? You might need my help on the third one. Well, number nine, I just used the product property and got log of seven times two, which is log of 14. Number 10, I used the quotient property. Log base two of nine divided by three is log base two of three. So we can think about it if it's simple math that we can do, we don't need to write that middle step, but if there's more going on, make sure we're writing our steps. In number 11, you see what's going on there? We have this five in front of that log three, so we can't use product property or quotient property until we take care of that using power property. I'm gonna bring that five up and get log of three to the fifth plus log of four. Well, three to the fifth, I don't know in my head, so I'm gonna leave it. I have addition here, so I can use product property to bring those two things together. Log of three to the fifth times four. Looking at 12, here I've got three logs now, so we need to be careful. First rule of thumb is we gotta do power property, take care of anything that's in front of our logs so we can use product and quotient property. So log of eight minus log of six squared, we know that's 36, plus log of three. Now we wanna bring all these logs together, let's always work from left to right. So using quotient property, I can bring log of eight minus log of 36 together into log of eight divided by 36 plus log of three, and then I'm bringing those two together using product property, multiply. Well, I can divide out a three, which leaves me with log of eight divided by 12. Well, eight divided by 12 is two thirds. Why don't you go try the next five, pause. 
Okay, check your answers. See if you're doing good. Really take a close look at 16. Did you get log base seven of x, y divided by z? If you did, gold star. Remember that anytime we need to write that base of a log, really make sure you're writing the base below. So we practiced writing as a single log. Now let's practice expanding logs. So here in 18, we have log of x to the third, y to the fifth. Well, to expand a log, we're actually gonna use the product and the quotient property first to expand, and then we'll use power property to bring down those exponents last. So it's almost like the reverse order of what we were doing before. So if I look closely at this log, I've got x to the third times y to the fifth. Well, that's product property. I can expand those into two logs being added together. So log of x to the third plus log of y to the fifth. Last thing I can do is bring down those powers and get three log x plus five log y. Why don't you expand those next three? Okay, check 19 through 21. Do you see what else you can simplify in 19? Log base seven of 49. I know that that's two because seven squared is 49. Do you see that sneaky one in 20? Log base b of b is one. So one minus log base b of x is what I should get. And finally, 21, we get two log a. Last change of base formula. This is so powerful because it allows us to evaluate any logarithm regardless of its base. We of course choose to use common log or natural log. Why? Because our calculators are programmed for those two bases, base 10 and base e. What you'll notice is we can choose to use either one, natural log or common log, and we'll get the same answer. Let's take a look. In our example, log base five of 36, let's apply the change of base formula. The change of base formula says in the numerator, we'll have the log or natural log of the argument divided by the log or natural log of the base. I like to keep in my mind, base goes below. So let's practice. I wrote both options out and tried them both in my calculator. They came out to 3.1699. So then if I wanted to go ahead and have three decimal places, that would round up to 3.170. Do the rest, choose which base log you want to use, base 10 or base E. Make sure you demonstrated the change of base formula before you evaluate. We wanna see both answers on your paper. 